Where are we today in terms of mobile health? What's, what's the state of this space? Well, I think there's obviously a huge amount of enthusiasm now, um, and there are a lot of conferences, a lot of discussions about it. Um, I think one of the reasons that people have gotten excited about mobile health, and particularly why the mobile phone industry has gotten very excited about it, is because it's a really concrete demonstration of why mobile phone networks are valuable. And I started a mobile phone network um, before Voxiva, and you never get credit for building infrastructure. And so I think health and finance and some of these other applications really create great examples of why these networks are valuable. Obviously making phone calls are valuable, sending text messages are valuable, but things like health really demonstrate the, the social value of, of building out this infrastructure and operating these mobile networks. And for this summit in particular, as part of the overall council business, did you have any particular expectations you're hoping that we get out of uh, this event? Well, I think it's, you know, I think it's brought together a lot of really key people and a lot of leaders from around the world that are thinking about this space. I think what I take away from the summit, though, is um, mobile health as a field is getting almost overbroad. I mean, there's so many topics. Um, I joke that, uh, you know, that in some ways, you know, mobile health is like paper health. I mean, mobile phones are just an, a way of communicating information the same way paper is. And paper can work in lots of different ways in the health system, and mobile technology can work in lots of different ways in the health system. So I think, you know, one of my takeaways from this is it's really important to kind of break down the components of mobile health. Um, you know, patient care or adherence reminders are very different than systems to help you know, ministries of health track outbreaks of disease. Yes, they both happen to use mobile phones, but they both use paper too. Um, doesn't mean they have all that much in common. So when we look at all those different dimensions in this broader thing called mobile health, are there a few that stand out that seem like low-hanging fruit, stuff that we should be all collectively taking action on today? Well, I think the most important and, and potentially you know, kind of significant thing to really think through is around sort of health behavior change and communication with individuals. I mean, I think whether you look at the developing world that has for a long time had a chronic shortage of, of healthcare providers, doctors, nurses, not least because of the brain drain. They train doctors and nurses and they get shipped out to rich countries. Or obviously in places like the US that already is a huge shortage of, of, of providers. And now with 30 or 40 million new people coming to the health system is gonna be even more of a tax. So fundamentally, the healthcare system is now is really overburdened and there just aren't enough doctors and nurses and providers to go around. So this traditional face-to-face -face, um, method of, of doing health just doesn't scale and can't meet, meet all the demand. So I think it's, you know, it's key to start thinking about how digital tools can help bridge that gap and actually step in not to replace doctors, but handle some of the more routine interaction and communication um, that can be automated with technology. So I think that is you know, critical. And if you look at both some of the big prevention goals around whether it's obesity or, or smoking, um, as well as more chronic care, I think there's some great opportunities to look at discrete interventions in, in helping um, drive behavior change and helping people manage their health more effectively.